Uh, I'm Tim Nugent, as I said, and this is Mastering Map Kit. Uh, before I get started, I just want to quickly uh, explain the title because it's not very accurate. Um, I actually originally sent the title as Care and Training of Sinister Owls to Tony when he asked for a call for papers, and uh, I said this title's temporary. This didn't please Tony. In fact, he was quite angry. Um, so I changed it to insert title here. Uh, this also did not seem to please Tony very much. He, uh, he was somewhat unimpressed. Can everyone hear me all right? Yep, cool. Um, at which stage Tony took a hand in it and named it that. Because uh, Tony named it, he's very pleased with it. Uh, this did have one significant problem, however. Uh, that was the word crap was on their website. Can't have that. Uh, so Tony then named it to Mastering Map Kit, uh, which once again he enjoyed thoroughly. Uh, I did just notice that there's a typo on the website, so I'm actually presenting Mattering Map Kit. Um, it's actually fixed in the app and the booklet, but I am doing more than Map Kit. It's just, yeah. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm from the University of Tasmania, along with like eight other people. Uh, we're really not scary, trust me. Uh, I'm a PhD student researching uh, awareness through location and group cognition and a few other things. Um, also have copious amounts of hair. Um, there's a whole bunch of us here. Don't be afraid of us because we look like serial killers. We're actually quite friendly for the most part. Um, so maps, uh, yes, I am going to talk about maps. I'm going to talk about core location. I'm also going to talk about some helpful tips and tricks. Um, but before we actually get into the nitty gritty, uh, I am using Xcode 4.2, so if it crashes a lot, sorry. Uh, and I am going to cover some stuff that's in iOS 5, so if you haven't got access to the beta, just wait a little bit, and then you can do it as well. Um, I also like Aladdin. So uh, let's get started, I think, is probably a good idea. Um, so the very first thing, map kit, obviously, it's, um, it's very good for maps. Uh, the name says it all. Um, the most important thing to know about MapKit is it's tied to Google's terms and services for Google Maps. Make sure you have a read of them before you use it. They're fairly uh, generous, but don't forget that it is still part of it. I just realized I'm not doing the screen recording. Tony's going to kill me. I wonder if I can just start it quickly. <laughs> yeah, I do. Where's my cursor? No one tell Tony. We'll just pretend it died. You won't know. No, that's iTunes. That's good stuff. All right, so no one saw anything there. Um, so yes, MapKit, great for maps. Um, the very important thing about MapKit is this base object MK map view. Uh, it's a child of UI view, so you can just basically dump it anywhere you can dump a UI view. Um, it's got a, it's basically everything map based. If you need to do something with a map, you're pretty much going to be using this guy. Um, it's got a ton of delegates, and that's where all the real power in MapKit lies, all the delegate methods that you can call upon it or get called by it. Uh, it also has a bunch of different properties you can set and change as needed, uh, including properties for annotations and overlays. Um, MapKit comes in a variety of lovely colors. Um, it's very easy to change them just with this uh, MK map type property. Um, there's three there. That's the satellite, the hybrid, and the traditional from memory. I also noticed in iOS 5 there's a fourth one, but you can't call it. Only Apple can. Um, so how do you actually start looking around? Well, you need a genie. Um, no, sorry. Um, there is this. How did that happen? Sorry, I did not check my slides. Um, you're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need one of the CL location coordinate 2Ds. Uh, if you're new, it's talk. Uh, they're very similar to the CL location she's talking about. It's basically just a latitude and a longitude. I've currently got that set to uh, here, where we are. Uh, we're also going to need this MK coordinate region. Uh, this is the property that we're actually going to be changing. Um, the map has a region which sets what it's looking at and basically how far zoomed in it, in it is. So then if we just set the span, uh, it's longitude and latitude delta. Uh, that span corresponds to roughly that zoomed in. Um, these sort of numbers are something you're going to have to play with depending on what your application is. There's no real sort of hard and fixed way to guarantee how far zoomed in you should be. You tend to let the user decide, basically. 
Um, and then all you do is set the region to our region. Uh, there's an animated property, which is, in my opinion, very useful to use because it does a nice smooth transition to the region as opposed to just snapping in. Um, so let's just do a demo. Am I? Excellent, I'm in here. Um, so just turn, uh, how do I turn you off? Um, so I've got this little thing here. Is that readable? It seems a bit big, doesn't it? Can I actually minimize here? Sorry? Is it readable? I don't... Yep, cool. Okay, awesome. Um, so I've just got a, 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 um, a new single view application here. There's nothing in it. If I run it, it won't do anything. If we... Whoa, where's my mouse gone? If we jump into our view controller... If we jump into our view controller... Hey, there we are. Um, let's, what, where, where have all my tools gone? It's very annoying. Sorry, all my tools have disappeared. I don't know why. Drag that in. And really apologizing hugely for this. Hide inspector. And I'm just going to link that up. So in here, uh, I'm going to call it map, save it, and oh, I did the mistake you told us not to do. I forgot to include the framework. God, this is so much harder than when I tested it in my... Um, what are you doing? Xcode 4.2 is fantastic, everyone, by the way, if you can't tell. Cool, done. Um, go back to our view controller. Import. Okay, sure, don't come up. I don't care about you anyway, auto completion. Is that all correct? If I do make mistakes, shout out. It's hard coding by a proxy. Um, actually, can I just try something very quickly? No, it didn't work. Bummer. I'm just going to move my here's one I prepared earlier over to here. And I should. Ha ha, clever Tim. Smarter than I thought. Sorry. If I Right, now I can code on here. So that's our dot .h. It's now got a map view in there. Um, we go to our dot .m. It's even synthesized it for us. If we then run this, theoretically, unless I've stuffed up somewhere, we should have a map. We wait patiently. And there's a map. Um, obviously, because the net connection's being hammered, it didn't finish loading, but we have a map. Yay! Um, so that's how we get a map going. And that's pretty much map kit complete. Yay, done. Um, there is a few more things you probably need to know. Um, as you saw, I used this set region method. Um, there's also set visible map rect. Uh, you can use them basically interchangeably. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, the the coordinate region, that region property, is tied to latitude and longitude. The map rectangle property is tied to screen space. Um, I tend to use the coordinate one because that just makes more sense to me. However, the map rect one does have some uh, quite good uses, particularly when you're moving around. Because um, MapKit uses something called the Mercator projection, and I don't want to get into geography for those who don't care about it. But basically, all of those dots are exactly the same size and exactly the same distance apart. They're all exactly the same area, just because of how the map is displayed, because the Earth's actually a sphere, they're all hideously distorted. Um, basically, one degree of longitude and latitude is about 111 kilometers square at the equator. Um, so you can use that as sort of your base guesstimate. Um, so if you're using the set region, you have to be careful, because if you set region to somewhere quite far north, your map will actually zoom out. But if you're using the map rect, which is tied to screen space, it won't zoom out. So it, 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 they both have their uses. The coordinate one, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to understand, but it's up to you.
Um, so like I said, that's pretty much everything map, the actual map view. It's boring, it's easy, it's done. Um, where things get exciting is what you can actually start throwing onto it. And first thing we're going to start throwing onto it is uh, annotations. Uh, and an annotation is pretty simply just a single point of interest on the map. Um, so how are we going to do this? Uh, well, annotations very cleverly made up of two different bits. The annotation, which is its model, and its view, which is its view, that whole MVC thing Apple loves. Um, so with MK annotation, uh, this is the model object describing what an annotation has to be to be an annotation. Basically, there's two important bits. Uh, the coordinate, which is just one of those CL location coordinate 2Ds, uh, and the title and subtitle methods. These are methods which return um, an NS string. You don't actually have title, you don't actually have to have title or subtitle, but if you don't have them, people can't click on, say, your little pin and have it say stuff. Um, the next important thing is the annotation view. Now, like I said, the power of MapKit is its delegates. Um, basically, every time a annotation needs a view, the Maps delegate gets asked to provide one. Um, now, it is important that you essentially cache and reuse these views, because if you use the scrolling a lot, it'll request a new view every time an annotation jumps back into frame on the map. Um, so make sure you don't just dump thousands of these things around, because it will slow the poor phone down pretty quickly. Um, so how do we actually go about using these? Well, very kindly, Apple's provided um, the MK point annotation object. Uh, which is just for all you want to do, all, for when all you want to do is just add a simple point onto the map without any real effort at all. Um, you can change, say, you could create your own custom objects to hold the data to throw it down, but I mean, or you could just use this point annotation. If all you want to do is say, hey, I'm here, just use one of these. Um, the next cool thing is that lovely little pale blue dot. Uh, it's a MK user location, and there's one of them automatically created. Don't try and create one of these yourself. Apple gets a bit finicky if you play around with it because it's got gypsy magic powering it. Um, luckily, it's very easy to turn on. Uh, you just go map.show user location, yes, and it's on. Um, you can also set this via interface builder if you wish. Because um, it's an annotation, you can actually make it have callouts. Uh, pretty simply, just set what you want the callouts, the title and subtitle to be and you've got it. Um, so let's actually hopefully not screw up my demo this time. I'll get rid of you. I'll just hide it down there. Um, okay, so we've got our lovely map kit here. I'm just going to jump down to view did load. I know I shouldn't chuck everything in here, but just for the sake of saving time. Uh, I'm actually doing some cheating with the location simulating, so we will actually get a blue dot with mine. Uh, but I'm not going to explain how I did that just yet. Yeah, gypsy magic. Right, so if I now run that, do 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 do. We wait, 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 wait. It, of course, asks us. Uh, where's Australia? Australia. There we are. And if we have a look, there's a little dot where you were sitting. Um, it's pretty easy. I might just actually quickly, I'll kill that. Arg. I'm um, just pasting in some code here, which this should now center the map on uh, the ridges Bellevue, Bellevue ridges. We wait, and there we are. I have no idea why it's cutting that weird border thing off. I think that might be something to do with the um, screen sharing. Um, uh, actually, the map view might not be properly centered as well. Ah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Like I said, feel free to heckle me. I'm an idiot. Self-honest. I mean, there's no point in lying. Center. Now, 
the added bonus of UDIF, <laughs> we have a properly centered map view. Woo! Yay! Let's close that. And OK, so that's basically how we uh, can put the annotation up. That's how we can put the user location. And we've now set the map to where we want it to be. Um, uh, I might actually just quickly add in a pin annotation just so we actually see what one looks like. Um, just very quickly. Uh, so we're back in our view did load. And I've created a pin annotation. I've called it point. I'm initting it, allocating it. I'm sending its coordinate to the same center where the user location is. I'm giving it a title and a subtitle. I'm then adding it to the map using this add annotation method. Once you've added it to the map, you can then release it because the map is now looking after it. It's chucked it in a uh, mutable array. It's maintaining it. Um, I will just turn the user location off so it doesn't get in the road. Then if we run it, we should also have a lovely little pin dropped on our map. There it is, done, nothing to it. And that's how we've now got a, uh, a pin and we're showing user location on the map, yay. So that's all great. Uh, what if you want more? Um, what if we want to have a little yellow dot uh, with say a bed icon and a little call out button? Um, well, that's not impossible. Uh, basically, where we do everything is in here, this delegate, um, map view, view for annotation. Uh, it's responsible for providing a view associated with each anna annotation. Every time an annotation is put in the same frame as what the user is looking at, this delegate gets called. So it could get called thousands of times if the user is scrolling. That's why you have to be intelligent with your um, views. So how do we actually go about customizing these views? Uh, we use this MK pin annotation class is provided for us. Um, it's just the pins, the red, the purple, the green, uh, which is great because they're very easy to change. You just literally set their color to whatever you want. The other nice thing about the pin annotation view is you can actually make it fall onto the ground, uh, which I quite like. Uh, it just means that it actually has something happening as opposed to just popping in out of nowhere so your users might notice it a bit more. Um, but you know, while that was good, we wanted more. We didn't just want a pin. We actually wanted a nice little yellow dot. Um, so how do we go about that? Well, luckily, the annotation view class just has a nice little property uh, of a UI image. So basically, anything that can be an image can be an uh, annotation view. Please don't make them huge, because um, these don't scale proportionally with the map. So if you put in like a 600 by 600 pixel image, it will be gigantic. Um, just something to be wary of. Um, so really simply, just set our annotation views image property to our lovely little yellow dot. Um, so that was pretty easy. Uh, the next thing is we also had that little bed and that little button. How do we go about that? Um, well, once again, it's not too hard. There's just a property that we can set on an annotation view. Uh, they're UI views themselves. So they can be anything that's another UI view. Theoretically, you could throw scroll views and table views in there if you really wanted to. Not advised, it would look awful. Um, and also, they should never be bigger than 32 pixels by 32 pixels, just because that's roughly the size of the actual call out box. Um, you know, so that's pretty good. It's looking good, but we also want it to animate. Um, so there's a delegate method, did add annotation views, which returns an array of all the different views which have been added onto the map. And we can then move through them and actually animate them, which is what we're going to do about now. Um, so we're still here. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to scroll this. <coughs> just go back over to my screen here. Going to add in some extra code. I'm just copying it because it's going to take too long to. That's the wrong method. Right, um, so I've added in 
the view for annotation delegate method. Uh, I'm basically saying, first thing you have to do is check which type of annotation you are, because you may have hundreds. Currently, we've only got two, the MK user location uh, and our own pin annotation. Um, for some reason, this makes no sense to me, and no one in the doc nothing in the documentation or anyone online can explain how this works. If you are a MK user location, so that little blue dot, just return nil. This doesn't make any sense, but um, apparently that's powered by Voodoo um, and just works. Uh, if you don't do this, you will override that little blue dot. Um, so make sure, unless you know what you're doing, you want to put this to the start. Next thing I'm doing there is I'm creating a string. Uh, just so we know which annotations we've annotated, basically. I left all that commented in there because I'm going to put the code available later. But I've now created a new annotation view. Uh, I am giving it an identifier immediately. Um, and there's this very important method called DQ reusable annotation views with identifier. Um, this is what I was saying about making sure that you don't have thousands of these views because you'll lag the poor phone to death. Um, what this does is every time you create a view, it gets thrown onto a queue. And then you can then ask for existing views that you've already created back off this queue by using this method uh, and the identifier that we've given it there. It's very clever if you're going to have heaps. Um, consumer we've only got one anim annotation. It doesn't matter, but I thought I'd just show it anyway. Uh, so if we did get something out of that, create a new view with that. Uh, we're going to let it show callouts. If you set this to no, people can't tap on it. It's the same as if you don't have a title or subtitle string. Uh, we're then going to change the image to a dot. I'm then going to add in a couple of callouts, setting these callout properties. One's going to be a button. The other's just going to be these little icons that have included. You can see them. Trust me, they're just icons. Um, else, uh, so if we did actually get a view back out of this DQ reusable annotations with identifier method, uh, just return that. Then you're done. We run this this time. We should hopefully have a little yellow dot. God, the simulator is so slow. Or not. That's cool. Woo, what have I done wrong? Not entirely sure what I've done wrong there. I'll have to get back to that because I'm running a little bit slow. But I do actually have working code that I will make available at the end of the talk. Um, not sure why that's not working. Slightly weird. Um, what happens if you want more than annotations? Well, Apple's very kindly, since iOS 4 provided overlays. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. Um, I've just made some green crap. Um, so they're actually based on the annotation protocol. Um, so they're very similar. They've got a model and a view object. Um, however, unlike annotations, there is no default um, view. If you just throw down an overlay without providing a view, it will just sit there and do nothing. Um, it won't appear. So make sure you provide one. Um, so the MK overlay uh, class is actually fairly easy to use, well, relatively. Once again, it's got the coordinate, which is where it's centered, like the annotations. This time it has a bounding map rect, um, which is kind of describing how much of the map is taken up by the overlay. Uh, this is only really important if you're going to be doing custom overlays. Um, if you're just using the pre-built ones, you don't really have to worry. Uh, then again, um, much like annotations, we've got a view associated with it. And much like before, you've got the delegate method that your maps delegate gets called. I know why. I forgot to set the delegate. Um, just one thing, a bit of a warning. Um, it, it can't make intelligent guesses. Um, you notice I didn't provide a delegate, yet my annotation still appeared because it had the fallback of the pin. Uh, there is no fallback um, for overlay views. If you don't provide a view, it will do nothing and just take up memory. Um, all the magic happens here. Uh, it looks very much like the um, annotation code, which I will just very briefly fix because that's going to drive me insane. Can't believe I forgot the delegate. What 
have I done now? There's a weird Q on the end. Huh. Hopefully this should now work. Once again, never do live coding demos because you're guaranteed to screw them up. Ta-da! Um, and there's our little dot. <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, making your own custom overlays is a bit tricky. Luckily, Apple's provided pretty much everything, well, everything I've ever needed so far uh, with these three pre-built ones. Uh, the first one's MK Circle. It's very obviously good for when you want to draw a circle. Um, it's pretty easy to hook in. We could just use our existing center coordinate that we've already got. Uh, we give it a radius. Those, those are in CL distances, which happens to be exactly the same as meters conveniently. Uh, and then we just add it to the map, much like with the annotations. Um, if you are using the map rec system, depending on what you're doing, instead of the uh, map region system, you can. There is actually circle with map rec. Um, use it much the same. Uh, then when you want to actually display it in that delegate method, you just basically have to have a view created, give it some properties, and then return it. Um, so the next object is the polyline. Um, it's a line. Uh, the important thing here that a lot of people make mistakes with is it's immutable. Once you've created this line, it cannot be changed without deleting it and then creating a new one. Uh, if you want to have something which updates as it goes, don't use this. Uh, however, to create it is pretty simple. Um, you just got this polyline with coordinates. That path variable is a C array of CL location coordinates 2D. Why it's a C array is beyond me. Um, I thought it would be an NS array or a mutable array. No, it's the traditional C array. Uh, and then a count variable. Once again, why it needs a count variable is beyond me. I don't understand. It knows the size of the array. Um, but hey, who am I to decide? Um, and it's associated view. Once again, you just do something quite simple. Make it spit it out. Uh, and then finally, polygon is great for drawing polygons, much like what it says on the box. Uh, and again, like the line, the method is you've got a C array and then a number of points that you're drawing it with. Once again, C array, no idea why. Unlike the polyline, however, it connects the first and last location together. And then, again, We've got views associated with it. Um, so, might try actually not screwing up my coding demo this time. Where's my mouse? Here it is. So, if we go into. Excuse me, guys. Just going to say. Once again, don't throw everything. If you did load method, please. It's not good. Creating a circle, like so, adding it. Now I'm throwing in an absolute ton of just random points chucking it into a polyline. I won't bother doing a polygon, it's pretty obvious. Uh, so the last thing we have to do is actually provide the views for these guys. And so all we're doing is just checking if it's a circle, do a circle. If it's a polyline, do a polyline. If it's a polygon view, do a polygon view or return nothing if it's none of them. Hopefully I haven't screwed up. Everything works much better at 3 a.m. when you're still coding it. You're a genius then. Or you, and look, it actually worked. Hey, I didn't screw it up. Uh, and the nice thing is these are actually tied correctly. So as I zoom in and out, they do actually stick to where they're meant to. Unlike if you have a huge annotation image, it will always be huge no matter how far zoomed in or out you are. Um, Okay, so that's the pre-built overlays. Um, sadly, that's not really enough. You know, if you want to do more, um, the really important thing is this is seriously scary stuff. Um, it's Jafar level scary. Um, 
the thing is, before you start jumping in and trying to make these, because they are difficult, Apple have actually provided some stuff in the past. They've provided a KML viewer overlay in, in their sample code documentation. They've provided a crumb path overlay, which is actually a mutable polyline, as in current in their demo code, it just follows the user as it walks around updates. So if you want something like that, use that. Uh, and they've also created a raster overlay for, say, taking a picture, cutting it up into coordinates, then overlaying that onto a map, as opposed to having this sort of very arbitrary precision system. Please use them instead of trying to make your own. I don't want to say you guys are stupid. You're almost certainly all smarter than me. But it is hard, uh, and it's very easy to screw up. Uh, if you do want to make your own, pretty much what your overlay has to do is use this method correctly, draw map, rec, zoom, scale in context. Um, and the reason it's difficult is because everything needs to be thread safe. Everything needs to be immutable once it's been created, unless you're making a mutable class. It's all very scary. Um, try and look at the Apple demo code. I'm not going to go through it because it's just way too hard. And I've already screwed up the simple put a point on the thing. So I won't go into that. Um, so that's MapKit. Now, just in the remaining sort of bit of time, I'm going to quickly go through core location. If you're at Udit's talk, don't worry, I don't cover, I do cover some of the same stuff, but I go over it in a bit different way. Uh, and the main reason you use core location over map kit, if you're displaying sort of map information, is when you want more control than just, say, the user location. While there's nothing wrong with the user location, uh, you don't know how accurate it is. Uh, you can't really control it. You can't change it. Um, my obligatory Latin picture. Uh, so much like what with you had, you basically create a core location manager. Um, you set its delegate. You pick your accuracy. Um, for whichever need. As Judith said in her talk, please pick the absolute minimum you need to. This stuff will drain the absolute crap out of your battery, and I'm not kidding. I've been playing around with this stuff myself. If you want to lose battery, leave the 3G on and use this highest location accuracy. Uh, then when you actually want to start getting your location, uh, tell it to start up updating location, and your delegate method gets called every time it gets updated. Uh, and if you do set a lower accuracy, this method will still get called if it happens to get a perfect accurate lock anyway. So it's not like you're losing the ability to get really accurate lock. It just means that it might not necessarily always return an accurate lock. Um, so that's your first option. Option B is to use start monitoring significant location changes method. That actually has the exact same delegate call as the previous one. Um, in my opinion and from people online, the significant change um, Core location thing is a little bit iffy. Uh, they determine significant as around 500 meters, uh, which is not really significant enough. Also, its accurate, uh, accuracy has been very crazy in the past. There's a lot of people complaining online. Apple have said they've improved it quite a lot in iOS 5. Haven't actually tested it, though. Um, but that is there. And if they have fixed it, it's probably worth actually having a look at. And then finally, good old option C is uh, region monitoring. So we create one of these regions. Uh, basically, I've just put it at a 100 meters circle. So basically, that overlay in the center. Tell it to start monitoring region. And then there's two relevant delegates. Uh, there's did exit region and did enter region. Um, that's quite useful in certain situations. I haven't used it myself. I just thought I'd bring it up in case you guys are after it. Um, so there's now geocoding, which is uh, new in iOS 5. Uh, the thing that's really good about geocoding, in my opinion, is Apple's made it incredibly easy to do. Uh, and it actually seems to work way better than the Google Maps geocoding, which is what they had hooked into MK reverse geocoder in iOS 4. Uh, it seems to work faster. It also seems to work better. And it does both forward and reverse geocoding. So you can turn an address into a coordinate or a coordinate into an address. And like I said, it, it seems to work so much better than anyone else's. I'm not really sure why it might be, because maybe I'm the only person currently using the service. Um, but hey, you do it. It's pretty simple. You just make a geocoder. Um, you, I've also made a location there. Uh, in this case, just go on geocode, reverse geocode location. Uh, this is using the blocks API. If you don't know how blocks work properly, uh, I can't really explain it. It's weird. Um, but basically. This method will get run, this completion handler method will get run once it actually finishes reverse geocoding. Uh, and it turns an array of placemarks, CL placemarks. Uh, and all I'm doing there is printing them out. Obviously, you'd probably be doing something a little bit more intelligent with them. 
Um, if you're doing something quite complicated, be aware this block executes on the main thread, so it may slow down your UI if it spends a long time thinking. Um, but So that's reverse geocoding. Then there's forward geocoding, where in this case, I'm taking one infinite loop Cupertino, uh, asking it to turn that into a uh, address, and it spits them out. Um, so all of these CL place marks are just a generic sort of, they're actually based on the address dictionary class, if you know what that is. If you don't, it's just a whole bunch of useless information about people and places. Um, the good thing is it returns all of the information regardless. So the actual service doesn't know whether you want a, um, a location or an address. It will return everything. It will return location, address, and it returns an array of them. So if it finds numerous possibilities, it will return all of them for you. Um, which I find incredibly helpful because sometimes you want to flick through the different ones. And that's something that I actually find um, Google Maps, just like on the website, gets wrong all the time. Um, so hopefully I won't screw up my demo this time. Um, so first things first, this time remember to include the framework. I don't know why it's so easy to forget it. There's just something about it. And then I'm just going to use the view controller again. Uh, oh, wait, I don't actually need that, do I? Oops, never mind. It's not the end of the world. Uh, so go back to view did load. And then I'm just going to use my cheat sheet here to copy everything out because I'm lazy. And, whoa. Okay, so I'm just doing the, um, the reverse geocoding. It works exactly the same either way. Um, and hopefully, when I run this, we should be told that we're at, uh, was it 135 Bell City? 215 Bell City? I never remember. We're in like Stabville, Melbourne. It'll be fine. Don't tell Tony I said that. He says as he records it. And yes, there we go, 215 Bell Street, Victoria, Australia. It also tells us the, um, the uh, coordinates that it got. Uh, and it did that amazingly fast, way faster than anything else I've seen, which is why I like it a lot. And let's pull you back down. Cool. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing forward or reverse geocoding. They both work very quickly, and they both seem to work scarily well, which is why I like it. Um, so now in the last few minutes, background tracking. Um, first thing, be careful. Um, this is the thing that's going to drain the crap out of your battery even faster than you think uh, because it will keep polling if it can. So if you accidentally leave it running, it just gone. Um, so the first thing you do is set the delegate to something to the other view controller. First time I was doing background tracking, I forgot to do this. And it took me about three calls an hour to figure out why the view control was getting deleted when the app was going in the background. Um, so I was losing my delegate. Um, then edit your plist, your info.plist to support location. Uh, and then you're done. That's actually it. Uh, your delegate methods for call location will now be getting called in the background. Um, this is where you should be using the lower accuracy stuff, the desired accuracy, doing region monitoring doing significant change monitoring. Don't just do the start updating location um, because it will flatten your battery in some sort of scarily fast um, approach. So now, the last thing I want to talk about uh, is a few tips and tricks. Um, like I said, I like Aladdin, and I have a 1080p version of it, so I thought I'd use them. Um, and the most important tip, and trick, tip or trick is you have to test your app in the real world. Uh, it doesn't matter how good anything you've done is. If you don't test in the real world, it's useless. Um, seriously, test them. Um, but <laughs> just being slightly more, well, slightly less vague, um, I use Google Maps a lot of time to start getting uh, these initial points because it's actually faster, I find, than trying to just code up a very quick application. Uh, this is what I did to actually figure out that Udit's example location was in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, 
So what this method will return is that, um, which you can then actually copy and paste. Um, these slides will be available somewhere. I haven't actually put the exact website up yet because I haven't finished it, but don't you know hush to write anything down. Uh, and the next thing is, has anyone actually used UI gesture, uh, the UI touch recognizer, gesture recognizers? Um, it's very easy to hook one of them up as a touch recognizer. Then there's a very great method on MapKit called convert to point, which takes a screen X and Y and converts it into a location. Um, so what you can do is you can actually just go like dot, 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 and it spits out um, all of these locations. So you can just like print them out in your debugging message, and you can get a whole ton of the actual locations where you're printing, which I find amazingly handy when you're trying to create those locations. Like I just dumped in that huge C array for my line. To do that, I just went like dot, 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 dot. Tony's taking pictures. Um, so pretty much the final thing I want to talk about is new in Xcode 4.2. Uh, it's location in the simulator. It's so good that I broke my Aladdin screen and look, put a picture of Duffman in. Uh, and sorry, um, this came up when I searched for Duffman. <laughs> Don't know why. Sorry, it was just too weird, so I had to stick it in there. Um, uh, the first thing to note is this requires Xcode 4.2. Um, if you don't have 4.2 or you're not an Apple developer, just wait a few months, it'll come out. Um, don't tell anyone I told you this. What it uses to do this is these things called GPX files. They're just a XML file um, that has this one thing called WPTs, which have a latitude and a longitude. Um, they seem very similar to KML files. I think the only reason why they didn't use KML files was because Apple doesn't like Google, um, I think. But if you want to create them, you can create them yourself. I also create mine using that touch map thing. I actually get it to output where I've put, um, which is what I do a lot of time. And so now for hopefully my final demo that won't break, um, I'm just going to sort of show you. So I've actually got this one here. This is what I've been using to actually force the user location to appear. Um, I've also got another one which is a whole bunch of random points in Hobart that I just made before I left Hobart. Uh, and the way you actually do this is edit the, the scheme, and then in the debug, you can actually set the location to where you want to be now, um, which is amazingly handy, I find. Uh, so currently, I've just been leaving it on Bell City Ridges. If I change it to Hobart Random, and then run this, once I zoom out of the map, Right. Ah, I just realized I forgot something. Sorry, I'll just do it in my cheat sheet over here very quickly. The user location's not showing, which won't actually. So much better at demoing at 3 a.m. Brilliant then. By the way, I didn't get much sleep last night. Zoom out of Melbourne, because I didn't have location data for Melbourne. And it's actually moving around. Uh, it, it moves once every second, um, which is quite fast, I find. But it's something to keep in mind. Um, this isn't a get out of jail free for testing your apps in the real world. But it is quite useful um, to save a bit of time just to make sure certain things are triggering when you think they should. Uh, it lets you make a controlled sort of, oh no, it's gone. Where's it gone? It's probably off the side somewhere. There it is. Moved off to, why would you go over there? It's crap over there. Um, it, it, it lets you sort of have a controlled means of actually um, working. The other nice thing is in the debugger, we can actually now change the location while it's running using um, LLDB. Uh, so I can now force it to go back to Bell City. And and it's been covered by our yellow little dot. but. It has actually moved to over there. And if I want, I can now change it. So we're in Rio. There's Rio. And now we're in Rio. Um, so this is new in 4.2. Um, and I'm going to really hopefully hammer this home. This is not a get out of jail free for testing your apps. All it is 
is a great way for making sure that things are triggering when they're meant to be triggering. So if you think something should be triggering when you walk into Rio, the app suddenly starts playing when I go to Rio. Um, this is a great way of testing it without having to spend thousands of dollars, but it's not what you should rely on. You should still be going out to the real world and uh, doing testing in there. It's a scary place, but it's all right. Um, so that's pretty much my talk. Um, thanks for putting up with me. I put the question mark there because I swear I was going to screw something up, and I did, so I thought ahead. Um, probably the best way to get in contact with me if you do want more information is uh, on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. That's my current Twitter avatar. If you're interested, it's a tarsier in a suit. It's like a subspecies of monkey. Um, I will be tweeting at some stage where I've hidden my demo code that I know works perfectly because I tested it for like a week. Um, and I'd just like to quickly thank all of you for putting up with me and thanks to Chris, who's not here, and Paris, who's hiding down the back, for the lovely pictures of Tony. Um, so yeah, that's my talk. If you have any questions, do ask. Uh, and feel free to come up and ask me questions afterwards as well. But yes, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, so I know I've got a broad question on the new guys, Apple Dev, so I've got no idea about any of this stuff. So mm -hmm. when we start looking at the Mac development, yep. um, is with the view, like on the web dev, yep. so with the view, do you generally put all your coordinates for a view in one layer? So for example, you could show five coordinates and then um, five Yeah, you. Um, if you're displaying things on a map, everything should be essentially self-contained. So uh, you haven't actually, if you want to display, say, 100 annotations, all of those annotations have to be displayed on a map somewhere. So they actually have to be added onto the map. Uh, so wherever the map is is where it will be determined um, which level they get added on top of. Um, is that sort of? No. No? Um, am I misunderstanding your question? or? Yep. And yep. Uh, no, no. You would add them as annotations or overlays, depending on what sort of actual what sort of actual image. So if you if, you, if it's just going to be a single point like the ATMs, they should be annotations. If it's going to be more of say a region like a park, that should be an overlay, and you just add them onto the map. And then if the user wants to toggle them on or off you should remove them from the map and then add them back onto the map. Um, that doesn't mean you have to delete the objects that control them, but you should remove them from the map. Um, Apple has a very dirty trick they often do that took me a long time to work out how they did it. And they have two map views, one that has everything on it and is set to be invisible. And then they just grab the annotations and overlays off it and stick it on the visible one. Uh, that works very well for keeping everything preloaded, but able to be switched on and off very quickly. The only downside to that is it does uh, it does have some minus performance effects, but it's not huge. But uh, everything should be added to the map, um, so it should all be essentially on the same view. Yes. Any other questions? Can I run out of here? No? Cool. Uh, well, once again, thanks for putting up with me. Oops, I left that running. Close. Unplugged so my screen goes back to normal.